Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Go. Nice. Here we go, guys. Yeah. All right, welcome back this week. Richard's with us again. I think tech, is this two weeks in a row with Richard? I'm trying to remember the Something release. Something like that. There's been a lot of Rich lately. It's good. I have no idea. Yeah. It's been a whole lot of just time. See, I, I, yeah. I, I fucked up the Saturday session because I thought it was Friday. Yeah, right now <laughs> it's a bit rough. It's, yeah. My days have pretty much meshed together. I saw, I saw some stores closed this morning because there was an announcement from the Dutch government saying they, they're pushing that what they call smart lockdown till April 28th. Yeah. And so literally I get there, normally open at eight and it's closed and I'm like, is it Saturday? Yeah. <laughs> is, is that what happened? I messed up my days again. I'm pretty sure it's Wednesday, but yeah. is it? Because yeah. we train on Wednesday and Saturday. So yeah. that's how I know my week. So I was like, fuck, it's Saturday. No, it's not. Okay. Yeah. I've been I've been living for a long time like that, kind of. Yes. My, my <laughs> only deadline was yeah. really, my only day-day deadline was Wednesday. We'll get the podcast up. But now it's right. twice a week. It's either... Tuesday, Thursday, or Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, so it's yeah. kind of when I get it in. So yeah, I don't know that I've known what day it is until it's been I a check. I, yeah. I'm like, do I have to podcast tomorrow? And I look and I'm like, okay, today is Tuesday. Yes. It's, it's been a while for me too, but I find myself even worse than usual. Going yeah. like, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I think it's just because things are closed. Yeah, that so, makes it worse. And Yaya is at home. So, yeah, so it's just weekend you know, like time. usually it's like, I know where it moves really slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, I kind of know if it's Monday or Tuesday right yeah. now. Yeah, Lincoln. No uh, it is. It is funny with Lincoln and Yaya both. It's like, well, at least you guys are really familiar with the doing your work at home, doing yeah. your schoolwork at home right. thing. It's doing that get, since before. It's it was starting cool. to get to her a bit. Is it? Yeah. And yeah, she like was happy to be out. out of it, to be back into school. Like yeah, that. but that's because teenage girls, man. Yeah. Teenage girls are mean. Like, uh, any parent out there, yeah. like, who has a teenage girl, know that. But she was liking the being in school thing as right. opposed to no, 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 and yeah. totally. Yeah. She yeah. likes to socializing. Except, man, teenage girls are mean. Like. Yeah. The shit I hear, I'm like, wow, that's why you're all like this. Yeah. That's because like, boys cause... will just fight and then yes. hug it out and, and you're then good to go. it's over. Women, oh, no. it's, it's not a like build that. up. There's yeah. a scheme. And they use words. <laughs> I, I have had, I have had beers out. immediately follow, beers with them, people who punched me in the face. Yeah. Almost yeah. immediately following on a couple occasions, yeah. actually. So, yeah, it's done. We forgive and it's I, we're done now. Yes. I can't carry this with me anymore. Exactly. I got to do it. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I can't wait right here for two weeks. I'm it's out. That's why my nose is all we men, Oh, no, because they use words. And so he goes on for. Ever. Yeah. And then they keep talking to each other. I'm like, but she called you a bitch yeah. two days ago and a slut and you were crying. It's like now it's shadow games. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's because like I'm going to get her back. Well, yeah. then there's the, here's the other layer that, we, that they miss when they're in, not in school too, is now there's not double agents. It's your friend. Yes, so it's right. like, God, the no, groups. I can't even imagine having to deal with that now. So The groups. You yeah. know that there's been, it's funny, like when I walked in, when she was in kindergarten, so five years old, uh, and the girls already had groups. The boys were running everywhere, their zipper open, completely, yeah. you know, oblivious, headbutting me in the nuts, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the whole thing. Whereas the girls already said group here or group there. And I mean, like it was, yeah. uh, it was so funny. It's very interesting. Yeah. So what are we starting with today? Let's start with the cooking show. The cooking show, yes. Yeah, so, so that's what Richard, I opened with Richard. Yeah. Here's Richard, Richard, yeah, Richard. Yeah, Richard. Now we're going to not talk about the yeah. other project with Richard. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so the cooking show, we've been doing the cooking show now. We filmed, I think, it's what's going to work out to seven. be about five well, episodes. Five. five or six episodes so far. Or I dishes, think. if you will, yeah. of varying lengths. Um, I will say from getting to film it and getting to taste it, <laughs> That my cooking now all of a sudden is like insulting to me. Every time I eat yeah. something that I make, I'm and like, especially to your wife. Ugh. Well, no, I don't let her eat any of Richard's. Yeah, yeah there yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> she she would never to, know. She doesn't yeah. get to go. But again, uh, if you don't watch the podcast, this is what you lost. She's always a little bit behind, so she won't hear this until I've been enjoying months of Richard's cooking. There you so. go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's been it's been sweet, Richard. You cook. I'm just going to say outright, just better food than I eat ever, even when I'm trying to eat <laughs> yeah. good food. So it is, it's, it's really been a treat, but we're trying to fill a gap with the nutrition protocol right. implementation a little bit too. Yeah, I think going into the fitness realm and people trying to be healthy and they think that it needs to be basic. It's not even basic. It's lacy food. People just yeah. have a shit connection or relationship with food where it's, like binge eating but shit food mm -hmm. or wanting to not like suffer what they eat or it's just they, they try to pretend they're robots and they just boil a chicken and broccoli yeah. and it doesn't need to be that way. Yeah, it's, no. it's so easy but, to make good food. By the way, do you think that we talked about this uh, 
we're going to explain what it does, where it comes from, yeah. everything. But we talked about this a lot. When you have great taste and good nutrients, you eat far less. Yeah. And so I'm wondering if there's a relationship where they want to eat more, so they make things taste like shit, just so can, they can so you shove can feel it. That fullness. Keep yeah. eating more, yeah. and it, so they can fill their macros. I mean, yeah. you were yeah, like, so, yeah. let's go back less than six months. I mean, still now, but let's go back to when the CrossFit Games were really big, especially in the CrossFit world, yeah. and even the fitness world. Like they're forcing you to eat. 8,000 calories, 6,000 calories. And it was like, I had somebody that was doing macros and was having almost 450 grams of carbs a day. Yeah. Like you can't, if you have good tasting or high quality ingredients, yeah. there's no way you're going to yeah. get to that point. Like, I mean, you saw yeah. what the ribeye that I cooked, yeah. which will be coming out. Um, you know, I'd rather spend 10 euros per hundred grams of ribeye, but I only need to buy 200 grams. Yep. Yeah. And I've done the yes, test, guys. Yeah. Believe me, like Julian knows me. When I used to go to restaurants, I'll get the kilo ribeye mm -hmm. and I'll eat it by myself. I can eat steak like a motherfucker. But yeah, you could high yeah. quality ingredients within 200 grams. You're just like, I feel good because the fats are so much better. Yeah. So really trying to a bring passion to people to be in the kitchen and cooking, being patient. Uh, He's starting with eggs, as we saw. <laughs> um, yeah, but they were fucking dude. good. Yeah, yeah, I don't even want to know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Just, just being able to have patience in the kitchen and being able to fuck up. Like I fuck up a lot, and you know, a day you guys will see is probably the most honest, <laughs> brutally honest, autistically honest person, where she doesn't even think she's being mean, but it breaks your soul. Because we were just talking, <laughs> girls are just mean yeah. with words. <laughs> yes, they are. I spend a whole day cooking, and she tastes like, yeah, it's missing something. I was like, oh, well, what is it missing? She goes flavor and she'll start going on and on I was like, well, flavor. this is what i have in the house i'm sorry yeah. <laughs> all right i'll try to make it better uh but you know just having fun experimenting it's you're like a scientist and that's where my, my cooking started when i was super young like my mom would get pissed off and leave us and she'd go have breakfast with my dad and so i'd stay at home and i cook for my brother and i and so i started with spam and eggs and everything has always been an experiment um i did a little bit of culinary school but mainly it was just Starting in a good kitchen, I got super lucky to be able to work under Chef Boyce and Chef Cuevas and Tony and um, just pick up a lot of things. Like once you have the fundamentals, you can take it wherever you want. So well, that's been interesting with the, the cooking show is there's a lot of times where you just move on because you're used to it. And Julian and I usually have to be like, wait, wait, why are you doing that? Why <laughs> yeah, because I know what's coming. And, and, so, it, yeah. and it's all, but it is always the most basic. Yeah, and, and like that's the stuff that is. is is I miss completely. Like literally, we talk about the eggs. You you cooked basic ass scrambled eggs. Well, it was one of those situations that had a chance to be an omelet. Yeah, chance. To be I an named egg. it both. Just like everything case. you're gonna do <laughs> with eggs, it, like it can always yeah. turn into scrambled eggs. Right. And uh, at least that's how I do it. And you come in and with really no extraordinary extravagant ingredients, just a little bit of technique, a little care, and a little effort to it. Patience. All of a sudden, eggs are good. Yeah. And right. I remember cooking a flat top. Of every morning, ten to twelve eggs and about right. a half pound of chorizo sausage and bacon Jesus. and cheese and a whole tray of <laughs> no, like the biggest electric skillet you can buy that'll right. have enough power to plug into a wall. And I would cook that full every morning before I leave for work, and then I'd eat again two hours later. So, right. But these, you, I'm just burning fucking eggs yeah. with hard yolks, just not caring, flipping it over. And but this focus that I've seen in the cooking show that I've noticed a lot is you. The attention is paid on the quality of food, the texture, the experience, the, that whole thing, and not just seeking taste, that feeling right. of fullness. Yeah, and right. I think that everyone's looking to be satisfied via volume. But that's a very American and thing. not taste. Yeah, and, and that, yeah, that's, that's the thing that's I relate new, to a lot. I think yeah. this is where America has influenced food the most. Is that more is better stuff? Yeah. Because yeah. in the French culture, like you know, like in the French culture, like you you go to the restaurant, you don't finish your plate. Yeah. Because you're not here to eat, you're here to taste. Mm -hmm. You know I mean? Yeah. There's a difference there. There's not a lot of Golden Corrals probably in Paris. No. I don't even know where the fuck that is. I don't is. think Golden, Golden Corral is a place that has every type of food and it's, that you can imagine. It's all you can eat buffet, chocolate yeah, yeah. fountain, everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everything. I mean it. Like steaks, burnt smoke, yeah. everything. But all of it on a scale of, of uh, an A to an F is about a D minus in. Right. In taste quality. experience but yeah. it's just it is steak and, and that is a lot of this it. and yeah. it is that but none of it's that good yeah. but I'll be goddamn if I can't put down five plates of it then right. they go home and yeah. hate myself for two days yeah but. yeah <laughs> right yeah I remember when I did a road trip with my brother we, he wanted to stop at a golden corral and I couldn't eat 
because I, w- I was disgusted yeah. by the greasy, not the greasiness. Sometimes the greasiness is good, but it was just the the amounts. Like it just, it's not even appealing <laughs> to me anymore. And just watching the people going in and out and you have nine out of 10 are just 300 plus pounds. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. there was not a single, there was no sign of health yeah. in that. And I was, I, was it, not the it goal, turned right? me off. Yeah. But, but placing that focus on on the actual experience of eating and enjoying the taste and then actually enjoying the food instead of just getting these numbers into your body has right. been very interesting. When I go back home and cook my food that's way less good, <laughs> I, I, I now miss that out. So it's been yeah. a few weeks now of me going, every time I eat something I make, I'm like, but we're gonna, I probably should get better at The, the this, reason you know? I think this is important, the show, is because we're going to see exactly the same thing we always see with the openers, with all the fitness stuff is until you experienced it mm-hmm. you can't relate so if we say people you have to taste food they'll go like yeah 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 sure i taste it it's like no that's not what we're talking about wait yeah, until right. it's actually really good and then you look at food differently it's always the same if it's not experience not with here but with your body yeah. it's not the same yeah i mean for me it's i mean i'm a, I'm a foodie for me i'll, I'll spend a thousand dollars on a dinner if I, if the experience is worth it mm-hmm. um, and it's not so much quality of ingredient I mean quality of ingredients absolutely but just though if you, if a chef can transform you into their childhood into their yeah. their livelihood what they've experienced through life comes out in their cooking yeah, um, yeah, and, I think, there, yeah, yeah. and I think you know that transfers over to anything that we do in life like you look at you know I've been watching a lot of we've I've spent a lot of time on YouTube in these last few days and just watching craftsmen, like there's a dude out there that does has been doing soba noodles for 18 years. Soba noodles, it's literally wheat noodles or buckwheat noodles for 18 years, and he still thinks he's a student. Yeah, it's flour and water. Yeah, yeah, that's and, what he does. And he says, I, I see soba noodles in 10 dimensions. Like who the fuck sees noodles does, in 10 dimensions? He does everything with his eyes closed, and yeah. just everything by touching. So he saw like I got it's, 10 dimensions because I got 10 fingers. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So it's, it's crazy to watch. And so for me, I would pay however, whatever he would charge for those noodles, I would pay just to have the flavor come out and just to see what it's like to have noodles that are made in 10 dimensions. That's mm-hmm. just kind of badass. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just watching each craftsman, you can see no matter where they came from, as soon as they found that one thing, they just want to be there creating the best experience possible with whatever medium they have. Mm-hmm. And so that's, for me, as cooking as that is, all the cooking shows I watch, they're always using ingredients that you won't be able to find unless you specially source them. And that's kind of what bothered me about a lot of the cooking shows. So all this stuff is you can buy at Walmart. I mean, the quality at Walmart won't be that good. Um, You know, try and look for social, like nicer places, but everybody in their own city should have a butcher shop. And I'm sure that you'll be supporting a, butcher shop much better than the Albertsons, the Savons, the yeah. Albert Heinz the already so cut up meat. Wh- what do you want out of the cooking show? That, right? Yeah, I want people to enjoy food. Like, it's, like I, I mean, we've had conversations with some of the clients where they're like, I just want something that's fast and easy. I was like, then you're never going to f- understand what feeling feeling satisfied from food can give you. By the and way, it's fast and easy. Like the eggs, you made them under... Minutes. Under 10 minutes. Yeah, I, so, think, I think that video might yeah. be two minutes long, three minutes long. Right, yeah. so, but that yeah. is my problem with fast and easy is like, no matter what you give them, they're always gonna want faster and easier. Right. So they don't want fast and easy, they want faster and easier. Mm-hmm. They just don't wanna make any effort when it comes to food. And right. that's, that's the problem. But that's where you see those delivery services get so big because people right. just don't even wanna, they just wanna throw yeah. it in the microwave. Like, yeah. But if there's no effort being put into the food that you're putting inside of you, then why are you putting so much effort at going into the gym? Which I mean, some of them don't even do that. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like, what? Where are you actually putting your effort in? Yeah, and, and don't you matter? Yeah. yeah, and so that's always you know that's the one thing. Like Jackie put up the post when we were working with her and everything. I was like, why are you not worth loving yourself for? Like food to me is that. Like yeah. that's the lo- like for it's me. It's I always say the ingredient. Like the food that you can taste. Better are the one like I can go to a restaurant. I can tell when a chef is just fucking pissed off, yeah. and when a, pa- a chef is actually passionate about doing what he wants to do, and that's that's that to me is every time I cook is like when I invite you over for dinners because I want I want to share what I'm yeah. making with people, and and that that to me I think goes back to just roots of socialization, like that just mm-hmm. being a tribal one hundred percent. But even even not going as far as you do, because some people won't won't be as good as you are, obviously. But at least. 
um, if you treat food that badly, it's you're treating yourself that badly. Yeah. yeah that's always the way I saw it. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, I think during the time all of us have spent me all the majority majority we've spent most of our lives in the US during this era of the 80s 90s early yeah. 2000s in which this processed food this convenient mm -hmm. food this this kind of dampening of the joy yeah. of the food yeah. that you get in exchange so for convenience or yeah. quantity or, or whatever quantity, it is yeah. or price you know everything is just I don't think it's price I think yeah. it's quantity honestly and but for me coming out of it I came out of it having not seen anything else either and not really experienced really good food. So I come, when we're here, we're out, out and about, and you guys will go to a restaurant. I'm like, I don't want to pay that much for a meal yeah. because I literally, it's not that I can't enjoy it necessarily or be like, oh, that tastes good. It is, it's still taking me time to adjust to the point where I will value it. Yeah. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, Absolutely. Totally. Because to me, it's still, it's like... I gotta sit at a table. I don't like doing that. I gotta deal with a restaurant, a waiter. <laughs> By the way, I don't okay. like everything. Is we an have experience. not. We have not taken you to Paris yet. True. In true. one of those places <laughs> where. Like yeah, the waiters, yeah. if the by the way, if the waiter knows what he's doing, he's not the yeah. guy just shoving the plate yeah. in front of you. Like a good waiter, it's almost like having a sous chef with you. Yeah. Because he See, explains and, to and you. To me, and I, it's and I, an experience. And I think it's a combination of the food, upbringing, environment, all of those mm -hmm. things. But to me, what I find is. I literally don't value that experience. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's because you haven't done, yeah. you haven't experienced that. Yeah, it's so everything yeah. to me when I look yeah. at that, it could be a very expensive, high quality dining experience. To me it is inconvenient. And that yeah. that goes right. back I think, right. to, I think to that's an upbringing. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But that's why we try to change because it goes back by the way. This is we say the same thing about fitness. Yeah. yeah. If you don't value yourself, if you don't, you know, like if you don't care about the experience then in a, just like yeah. when you cook food, it doesn't work. When you train, it won't work. It won't work yeah. either. And I think that the upbringing is huge, especially you know in the U.S. It's you wake up, you have cereal, you go to mm -hmm. school, you have a shitty piece of pizza, yeah. you yeah. come home, and mom has frozen casserole or chicken with salt or boiled chicken because she was doing Jane Fonda or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the the like a lot of the people I've talked to is just, they just don't enjoy it. And yeah. you're starting to see the revolution. I mean, you know, when I started getting into cooking, I was really young. And maybe once I started turning about 18, then like the celebrity chefs really became a thing and yeah. they became rock stars. And so you're seeing the, the food and the restaurant concept starting to change as far as them wanting to become more of a casual dining experience. It's no longer that white glove service. Yeah. And yeah. there's some cool places that will do like it's just it's so cool when you can go into a place like there's a place here called first class and you walk in and you get transformed to fucking early 1900s uh, and the menu has changed a little bit but remember the one we went to in toronto where we walked in the dude looked like uh was it gene simmons the guy from kiss mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you walked in I, and yeah. nothing has changed from like 1956 and these dudes are all super old dudes that have been working there from the beginning and the service, like it, it felt like I was in a in a remake parallel universe of The Shining, mm -hmm. like you know, like the old bartender, <laughs> like it was just that one hundred percent, and it was just such a cool experience. So, I'm not saying that each experience needs to be five stars and and expensive. Yeah. If I want to go to a shitty diner, I want a shitty diner. I don't want IHOP where they're trying to be clean and fast. I want like a shitty diner, which I like in Montreal. Like we went to this one place. And remember the old lady, she was selling poutine and uh, she, she was, say, yeah. yeah, she was just mean and grumpy. I was like, oh, I love it. It's going to be fucking. And she uh, refused to speak English. Yeah. So she would it not take great. orders for him. <laughs> yeah. I had to, I had to go, although in French. But it was so good because that's what I would yeah. expect from that experience. Yeah. So when I invite Julian over, I'm telling him, hey, I'm making a bondiga soup. So expect spicy soup. Like it's going to be spicy. It's it, it, like I'll put a theme to what I'm cooking. And I think that's really the best way for people at home is like, go start learning about different foods. Like, that's why I said like secret ingredient. Like every time I go to the supermarket, I'll buy something whether I like it or not. Like if I know what it is, yeah. I just pick something I don't know what it is and I'll taste it. And I'm like, oh, this is, you know. Was the other? It was like spicy Asian lime paste. Yeah, it was awesome. And it, it was so good. It actually wasn't bad. Yeah. It's pretty but good. I'm looking at it, I put I'm that like, in this, the mayonnaise yeah. last night for the oh, cauliflower. So it's like there is a 10% <laughs> so chance that this is a fucking, this is decent. That's what I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, mixed yeah. with that, with the Japanese mayonnaise yeah. and then the, you put some spice into it. Yeah, yeah a little, little bit of yuzu. In your oh, it was so good. Well, it's been, it's been very interesting. And I, I think for people who don't have that, 
uh, appreciation, like full appreciation for the craftsmanship of food is it is a thing that you can start to hone yourself, appreciate yourself in a lot of different ways. You start at a lower level. Well, yes. go one, try to cook and try to make things that are good. Two, right. um, also go out and try to have a good dining experience instead of doing what we talk about people doing in fitness and learning and everything is we check our boxes nutritionally right. often. For me, eating is I should eat mm. now or I'm going to get small. <laughs> so it's, it's yeah. like, now I eat. There we are. And, and it's I'm, still and the I'm, micro mentality. Yeah, and, it is. And, and I may be eating better things, but the experience is actually, it's not more valuable to me than it was when I was tracking and eating a ton of macros, actually. Right. But it is It is just less work. But I want to, I'll, we'll know? talk about this by the end because I, I think I know why this happens. I yeah. think it's like, you know, back to the ego conversation from last time, but yeah. at, at the end. But in the meantime, so, but people don't have to go as far as you go. But I think the cooking show will show them two things. First is to how to cook. Yeah. You know, where to pay attention. Right. Because people, I think, have, it's like fitness when we see where people, I'm realizing, even though you told me that from the beginning, I'm realizing that more and more is how little they know. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like, no, you don't do that. You know, kind of thing. So I think the, the cooking show will go like, this is what you pay attention to, which seems to be actually extremely important. Right. And the second thing is that it's like, try it, taste it. I think people make their entire meal without ever checking to see if it's good or not. Every meal I eat is that way, yeah. Julian. You know, I it's, don't even, what about I finish? That's it. Like, it, is, no... it is on the plate. I'm not joking. It yeah. is on the yeah, plate. Exactly. My family's plate. But this is I how eat. people train. Yeah. Yeah. They do the programming and then by the end they go like, was it good or not? Whereas yeah. a good lifter will ask himself 27 questions before he gets to his main lift. Yeah. Like, is it, you know, with the empty barbell, should I do one more? Yeah. Like most people... The, we'll go straight through. The, yeah. Well, it's it's avoidance though, right? I mean, oh, if totally. you look at anxiety, it's, totally. it's, it's, it's that, anxiety it's based. Yeah. Anxiety that they're going to fail cooking for themselves. It's exactly. like, dude, that's how you yeah. learn. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. I mean, it is what it yeah. is. Like you're yeah. just avoiding new ingredients. You're avoiding patience. You're avoiding so much, yeah. and you claim it because you're a robot and you just need fuel. Yeah. Like, but I think I know where it comes from now. Well, that robot mentality. I'm just I'm a robot. I need fuel. So give me that. But it's weird because the same people err on that side, and they eat just. I want, give me pizza. It, it, it's right. a junk food that even amidst the macro fitness But I think it's the same thing. Too. I think it's an ego-based yeah. uh, mentality. But even if you're looking at it as fuel, wouldn't you want the best kind Good. of fuel? Yeah. Like that, that's what kills me in the U.S. is there's been plenty of documentaries about it and whether they're trying to persuade yeah. you one way or the other is not important. If you look at the fundamentals of it, you look at the vegetables you're buying at Costco, yeah. they're nothing but fiber. There's no minerals, there's no nutrients, there's <coughs> nothing in it. It's dead vegetable. That's what, six weeks? Like, I'm yeah. sorry, if you buy a vegetable and you're looking at it after a week and it still looks exactly the same, it's yeah. a fucked up vegetable. It's, yeah. a, it's a dead vegetable. There is nothing in there if but you have fiber. potatoes that don't sprout within two yeah. days, those are not potatoes. So <laughs> if you're looking to find yourself the best fuel, yeah. Just like you would pay to buy the best programming or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Like spend some time. There's so many small businesses, yes. especially in the U.S. Like I'll say that for the U.S. The small organic farms and mm -hmm. grass-fed beef cattle farms and ranches. They should. Like it is so difficult for them to stay open because the FDA makes it nearly impossible. Yep. Like if you want to talk about fucking mafias, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And so like go support. You guys keep talking about support your local gyms and this and this during these times. Like go support your local farmers like yeah. go find go explore have like there's so much cool shit that you can get like we we're Milk. talking yeah nope. like from a cow that actually <coughs> moves yeah. around and eats yeah. grass and not fucking right. corn and candies and the fact that people will drink milk but not knowing where it comes from. By right. the way, this is because most people don't travel, but you eat, you eat, you drink milk in the US and you drink milk in France and oh, it's different. not the same product. Yeah. No. It's not, I don't know what that fucking thing is, but it's like milk with water. What, like the first time I, I no, drank... It's sugar. <laughs> yeah, the first time yeah, I drank yeah. milk in the US, I was like, what did I buy? Yeah. Like, I, I, it's like, is that almond milk? Is that, what is it? Like, I, I could not understand what it was. Well, it's interesting with dairy too, is, is, it is it has, from animal to animal, from region to region, it should be different. Yeah, right. It absolutely should taste, appear, should be different. And... If in the United States, there's like a standardized model of fucking milk. It, right. Like everything tastes the same unless you yeah. get outside that big structured system. Yeah. And I think the value in finding, like Richard said, finding a 
a farmer, someone with cattle who handles who so you know where your meat is coming from. Right. You know, find someone for dairy because by God, with this protocol, we I go through a lot of damn cream and cheese, yeah. and I really enjoy it. But imagine, and I would <laughs> much, similar, yeah. and this is the truth: is is that well, the the cream I get here. I don't like as much as the heavy cream I was getting in Austria. Yep. In Austria seemed richer, more buttery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't but know why that there's is. There's a dairy from our side of the yeah. world. So you but, to, but. but it makes me want to look for something that's richer so, yeah. and more buttery. So Imagine if we were to buy yogurt from a local farmer. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I would not taste the same. No, right. and plus for If us, you had raw milk. Plus like, those things yeah. represent a, a, a high percentage of what I put in my body. Yeah. yeah. Calorie wise. And it might as well be good. It also might as well do some fucking good. Right. And in my opinion, putting a bunch of money in Costco's pockets or yeah. Walmart is yeah. just not as much of a value for my money. It is. It, it really is like getting the cheapest chicken you can in return. Right. It really is. Well, like, there was a, an article. Who wrote, was it in BuzzFeed? Somebody wrote the article. Um, and they were trying to figure out what kind of crazy shit the Chinese markets were doing in New York City. Because they have all their produce is super, super cheap. Mm. Like I'm talking 20 to 35% cheaper than grocery stores. And so they were going crazy trying to figure out what it was and they finally figured it out. And the Chinese markets, these owners will go to the farms outside of New York and buy all local produce. So they take out the middleman completely. And so buying at the Chinese market, not only are you getting organic, even though they don't advertise it, you're getting super local, like within 50 kilometers of the city. And you support. support Yeah. And, and, And they were like, we're very surprised. We were thinking that there was like, you know, yeah. the shit that they were buying that was supposed to be discarded or whatever. And it was all local, lo- which had a lot more variety because local farmers need to have variety. Otherwise, their their crops will die. Like yeah. the bananas dying right now, the corn, you have like four uh, varieties, potatoes, uh, so on and so forth. With farming, you have to recycle the soil. Yeah. The, yeah, but that's... Not like, according to the United States system. Yeah. No, of course at not. At all. At all. <laughs> but, uh, we're, we're, yes. From what they do is they grow corn. Yeah. And then the next year they grow corn. And then, and then, then, then everybody grows grow corn. more corn. Yeah. And when the market for corn is now... People aren't interested in buying corn at a high price. What they do then is so they be- just cut down all the trees again, and they grow even more corn, which then drives the price even lower. And then they wonder why they're not getting seven dollars bushel that, corn anymore. Did they get stop like a starvation period? Yeah, it didn't work 20s. that well in the twenties and thirties. Right, so it's in the twenties. Like they had it's that, not even that edible disease. corn. <laughs> well, they, well, right. well, we also no, we had like the dust bowl because they right. tore yeah. up. Exactly. So literally all the shelter belts that have been getting <clears> right. put in yeah. Yeah. when the price of corn drops. They rip out all those fucking trees to prevent the wind and the Always better. and put yeah. more corn in to cover the gap because the price is lower, which drives the price even That's lower. Nothing. And then they need some sort of subsidy to prop the whole industry up again. So that does work. That's the way it should be done. Yeah. This, <laughs> the way it's done there is not the way it's done. But that food's not getting eaten. That's just getting burned in fuel. Like no, it's getting eaten yeah. by cows. And eaten by, by cows. cows. Yeah. And so. humans. But the, the difference is the Chinese market, they make the effort of going to find the stuff. Yeah. Like this is where... Like, we love blaming politicians. I love blaming the medical industry. Uh, but at some point, we Take also have to look in the mirror. Yeah. It's threefold. Like, sure. we're going yeah. back to avoidance. Yeah. Like, at some point, you're going to have to look in the mirror and realize, like, you're just not making any effort. Yeah. And then right. they'll come, like, I don't have time. I don't have this. I'm like, you have time to watch TV. Mm-hmm. Like, did you ever check the numbers on average of how much people watch TV per day? Yeah, this is when I go, time. like, I don't want to hear the right. phrase, I don't have time. Ever again, yeah. and now they even Ever. deliver at home. So the right. food's delivered yes. at home. Yeah, what, no matter what country you're in, for the right. most part, they deliver to your house. Yeah, those small yeah. businesses, and they're asking yeah. you to do it to help them. And most people still like. Uh, so I want to talk about what that extra work is to right to try to eat more, with the appreciation and effort that Richard puts into it than what I have and currently do. Right. Right. That gap to be filled is it's very not interesting. Time. It's not time because no. I still have to go to the store as often as before. The difference is I will not say anything interesting about my average grocery run. However, I went to go make the dish that we had made. I think it should be the first episode. The which scallop one. Mm-hmm. Cheese fondue and scallops. And there I am trying to find fresh, good scallops all of a sudden on a Sunday in Utrecht. No, right yeah, no, I don't yeah. <laughs> but, but, but I'll be goddamned if I didn't go to two or three stores that I'd never been to before. Right. Yeah. And they found an Asian market that is fucking awesome. Yeah. Has stuff that I will go there for so great. Enjoyed the experience. By the way, it was one of the few shopping experiences I've had amidst all this that yeah. was really joyful. Yeah. People there were nice. Yeah, it was fucking like, yeah. great. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so then I go home and I'm cooking and explaining it to like This was the day after I just filmed the thing. So the difference was I was like, first it tasted really good. I think it seemed simple and I'm going to play with it. 
and it was not near as good as Richard's, but I had but a great good. experience. Yeah. It tasted good. It was healthy. My family fucking loved it. Yeah. And now all of a sudden I'm held to some higher standard of cooking <laughs> that I don't know that I can add up yeah. to, that I can measure so up to. So we need to film more shows is what yeah. you're saying, yeah. so we can learn. Yeah. But by the way, time-wise, you did not spend that much more time cooking None. Richard's way than your way. None. And, yeah. and, and even, because like, I do, I, I cook the way I just kind of appreciate food, which is like, let me just get it done. And so my kid, he'll have some moments where something's interesting to eat. Right. But usually, I don't get a lot of, ooh, right. out of him yeah. <laughs> when I cook food. And this has been a couple of times since this, we're giving that little extra effort. You know, you can see him appreciate food right. in a way that he has not before. Yeah. And that's the thing is, I didn't have that growing up appreciating quality yep. or right. anything. We're just kind of trying to get it in. And so I think to be able to get that started in yourself sooner... And that can yep. carry to your children and further very quickly. Go through, yeah. And uh, and I just think that that's a that's a very important piece to when we try to talk about having overall good. Right. We talk health, about this health. for everything. We talk about this for fitness. We talk about yeah. this for everything. That's the point. Is can you please take care of yourself? Yeah. You know, like not do as you're told, just eat six eggs, but actually like put some of you in the. Like avoidance cooking, is not yeah, a good no. thing. Like meal prep, how often? What what do you see most meal prep being? Oh, it's chicken Bulk, and bo- yeah. bright broccoli, rice, chicken, it's not flavored chicken. that yeah, good. Exactly. Let's just get it in a box so I can but eat that on cook, Tuesday. Yeah, it's and, just, and it's and it's cold and mm-hmm. and by the way, like, I not to go into this on these episodes, but it doesn't work like that. They, that's not how the body works. Taste and smell, all that stuff matters a lot to your digestion. It matters to your, how your system yeah. processes things. We're going back to cutting off signals from the body, yeah. which I think ego is. But just, then it kicks back because then you see the panic does. attacks coming through. You of see the gut does. health going to no, shit. No, you pay for it. Yeah, yeah of course ridiculous. you pay for it. Like you and think you're, you're stopping that? the signals, but yeah. all you're doing is you're stopping the good signals. Yeah. What, what you're making sure of is that the bad signals are coming. Here's what I don't get is the amount of things that we in our society do take in exchange for short-term happy, right? A short-term better feeling, a yeah. short-term this. Right. Why are we spending our time cooking and eating food that isn't good yeah. without yeah. any attention right. to detail? Because like, yeah. it does. It is not a matter of way more time off. I think using the word happy just pisses me off. Yeah, true. Like, mm-hmm. does it give you joy? Does it yeah. allow you to be present? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's like my thing is always: can I get a mouth gasm out of it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Can I be truly in the moment where you're? having to be present and enjoy each mm-hmm. of the flavor profiles that are coming in does it take you back to a memory as a you know from childhood does it bring up so- something like does it does bring it you- take you out of your head yeah yeah can like, he can he do that yeah. for a second right i think what i see the most me is that is people can't get the fuck out of their head anymore they shut down everything so much and i yeah. think this part of that too it's I don't, I don't, I won't make an episode on that, so it'll be the next one, because that's going to take too long. But I think that's a, a major thing is that. They get stuck is, on the conscious thought only. I, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I think so. So anything that takes them away, they start to go. Ah! Yeah. Well, and that conscious thought only does become just this mathematical, rational box checking system right. too. It yeah. almost has to be. It's, well, it's ego, about a need. That's what right? ego is. Yeah. I, I don't think it's in that. I mean, that's was, what ego is. Yeah. That yeah. was with my brother and, you know, he's a professor and everything and we were talking about wines and I would open a wine and I'd smell it and I'd start giving my experience of what I yeah. think it's going to taste like, the aromas I'm getting. Yeah, the memory and, brings. Yeah. yeah, and he goes, he's like, yeah, I can tell it's going to be a, a medium body, it's going to be acidic, it's going to be a little bit heavier on the tannins. And I'm like, yeah, but what does That's it taste true. like to what you? What does he's that like, mean to you? And he's like, it yeah. tastes like wine. I was like, so there's no soul behind it. Like, yeah. then I agree, you shouldn't drink and or we should try and find something that you're going to enjoy while yeah. you're drinking. You know, but but then I make him the eggs like I made you guys because that's how my great grandma would make them. He loved those eggs, mm-hmm. and he eats those, and that's the one where he can be like fully Boom. present. Yeah. So you you have your thing. For me, is I try and find that in everything I do. What so is your what what is your one thing that does that for you the most? Like whether food wise, let's or... go food first. Oh man, that will actually almost help you time travel. Yeah, time it, it'll tra- t- it'll oh. suck you into it so much it's that you're the most one, present dude. with that food. Like I'm a big fat kid at heart. <laughs> <laughs> like I've been wanting a cake, but I want like a cake. Yeah. It needs to be the cake, and I don't have the oven to make the cake. And for me, the the cake would be almost like a cinnamony chocolate, like oh, 
nice and creamy. Like for me, mm-hmm. I, I love going back to when I was 15 years old because there was no responsibilities whatsoever. I would spend all my days in the kitchen working. But then I would also, when I wasn't, because I wasn't able to work full time because that's called child labor, um, <laughs> yeah. I would I would go do bonfires with my friends. And so like bonfire moments for me, like and that's why I love super smoky scotch mm-hmm. because it just takes me back to being at the beach and having bonfires with my friends. Yeah, smell it on your yeah. clothes all day. It's funny, me it'd be bird away croissant. Yeah. Because that's my childhood in Paris, the good moments. Yeah. With my grandparents and everything. Yeah. yeah. So then you can get, you know, but yeah. so then from there you can get ideas. So then we need something that has like a slightly flaky texture and you want to have like that butter, almost slightly burnt caramelized butter to come mm-hmm. in and almost be dripping down. Yeah. So you can start taking, even take cauliflower and just shave it and just fry it yeah. with butter and you'll be set. And some Parmesan, so it gives a little bit of texture. Yeah. And right there, you would have yeah. you would transform them from a healthy food to going back to having butter croissant. Well, I think that's that's what the, what you use the term. I don't want to have a cake. I want to have the cake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's the thing to take away. You're gonna make dinner. You're gonna have. You're just gonna have dinner. You're gonna have the dinner tonight. Yeah. You know the dinner that you want to have. Right. Same with Julia. Julia doesn't want a buttery croissant. He wants. The, oh, the I know exactly yeah. why we get it. Yeah, because yeah, I can get a croissant yeah. anywhere, but it's yeah. not that. No, I know exactly yeah. where yeah. in Paris I would get it because yeah. that one is fucking good. But when we, you know, in cooking with the show, one of these, one thing to point out though, it's not just a matter of putting more value as far as money into this or time. No, but that no, it, and that's actually really we talked about this a lot. With the eggs, it will not be one of those shows where you need to spend three hundred dollars to make dinner. That's yeah. the entire right. point. We've seen well. There was a couple of yeah. shows we had looked. We looked at a lot of different shows to make sure we kind of. Had inspiration where we wanted to mm-hmm. have it yeah. and 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 get ideas and, and and it was interesting you, you we would we would see richard showed me a couple where he's like i mean the food this guy makes is fucking incredible but, but this might it. be a 400 hundred dollar sandwich yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like who yeah, yeah. Who's gonna do that? Do, so yeah, exactly. and, and if we did that it would be interesting right and i would enjoy eating I, it i would love having but, that show too eventually but the, right, the non things but i'll be damned i want to taste it but uh yeah but i'll be damned if very if it's going to help very many people learn to, you know right. like to go do the thing and that is really the point of this is to teach it how to cook the appreciation for it the the devil's in the details right it's yeah. a true life because training is like that yeah. too and i mean it's you don't need to have exp- like i have some expensive toys of that. I mean, they're not even that expensive because I'm a cheap ass because if I can't use it for multiple things like knives, I have nice knives, but I won't use them on the show and I don't have them out because Daya will just ruin them. <laughs> so my knives are the Thai, Thai knives that will stay sharp for a super long time. They cost $6 to $15. What else do you need? Yeah. You don't need to go super crazy on the shit. Once you start to find something, then you'll go for quality. So like when I'm not doing the show, I'll go splurge and try to have my hidden cash to go spend money on ingredients that I normally wouldn't buy. Yeah. Right. But I mean, like I went and I found they, they had a piece of a five marbled Wagyu and I put it on Instagram. I bought two and a half ounces for a hundred euros. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> who's going to do that? Like I yeah. almost got killed by my wife. Like, it, like she was not until she tasted. Then she said, okay, it's yeah. all right. Um, but you know, like spending that amount of money, on a daily thing is not no. really worth it. It's not gonna um, work. I will say this though, I could drink that fat. It was so fucking delicious. Yeah. We had two and a half. It was two and a half ounces roughly, and her and I were both full and satisfied. Can, can you give that in grams, please? Oh shit! A hundred. Uh, one, one ounce is grams. one ounce is twenty eight grams. Just never no, do so drugs. So it's like a hundred. <laughs> no. In the states, Jesus. Twenty eight grams. <laughs> yeah. So it was about. 100 130 grams something like two that. Out, two ounces would be almost 60 grams. yeah right so we and we shared it so like yeah, exactly. 70 grams each yeah 50 and, 60 grams yeah. each and that was and that was more than enough for us like because you the fat was the yeah. fat it, it's an unreal like if you ever have the opportunity to go buy it somewhere and cook it at, at the restaurants and markup is crazy um although they'll prepare it the way they should be prepared right the, the you won't get you won't fuck it up do what um, would be fancy in your life. Yeah, but it was it was you know a square like that, and you you just it melts it's it melts in your mouth unlike anything else it ever has, and you have super high omega threes, omega sixes, the B comp vitamin B complex, like the amount of shit that the wagyu beef has is amazing. Yeah, and so but you don't need to live off of it. No, it, you won't. But you should enjoy it once. But yeah. you should learn the difference. Yeah, yeah. But so like when I go to the butcher, they have the black Angus ribeye which is not bad right which would be like usda prime probably mm-hmm. um and it's six euros per 100 grams 
You have the Dutch beef, which is super lean. It's really lean. I, I, the quality is okay. Uh, is about five euros per hundred grams. And you have the Australian Wagyu. It's like an A2 for nine euros. So I'd rather just buy half the portion mm. and have double the amount of fats that I need. Yeah. Compared and, to and the by the meat. way, because of the quality of the meat and everything, yeah. you still will get, if not as much, just a certain amount of protein in your system. People still think, yeah, yeah, people still think just because they ingest twice as much meat, they get twice as much. It's, mm. That's not the way it works. If it's bad meat or quality right. or whatever, that means you will ingest it, but you won't digest it the same. Yeah. You won't get the proper nutrients but from there was it the, anyway. The, there's a show on Netflix called Explained and they're talking about why people keep wanting to eat more meat. A, it's a shit amount of quality because they're yeah. all basically eating candy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, like there's been shown, there's studies that show that there's corn DNA, like corn cells in the, the cows now. Like it's ridiculous. But um, it's the dopamine effect. I mean, it still it yeah. still hits us. The brain starts yeah. running like crazy and it makes you want to keep eating more and more and more. more, and, more and more and more. Especially yeah. the shittier the quality, you need to have more to try and get yeah. that, that to get stimulus. Well, you're yeah. going to be unsatisfied nutritionally. Yeah. Therefore, you're going to crave keep something. Wanting more right, but we know that from the cephalic yeah. uh, insulin, insulin response, yeah. insulin face, that um, taste and smell and all that yeah. stuff is enough to create certain reactions. Yeah, and so now what I do is I'll go to the store, buy things, I'll cook dinner, and if either they or I are hungry 20, 30 minutes afterwards, I know that it was shitty quality, so yeah. and I won't buy that stuff anymore because if it's good quality like that steak yeah. i didn't eat for almost a whole day i was yeah. so i was done yeah. like i had more than enough so you can expect to see though on the cooking show you're going to see not just things that are these overwhelming uh flavorful experiences you also do a lot of things that are still subtle too like yeah you know there, there will be things that are very flavorful very rich uh, i'm not going to give away anything yet but mm -hmm. but there's a there's a lot of the, the that's a really good bold really great experience to eat and then there's some things that are just subtle and perfect yeah and and i yeah. think there's there is a lot there's a big spectrum on the attention to detail and, and it all matters kind of no matter what you do and it's been very interesting seeing richard cook like watching him cook because i haven't done that really before yeah. i knew richard could cook <laughs> yeah but now but now i film it and and then messing around with the footage and stuff it's like it's been it's been a very interesting project to see so it gives me already tons of things to do in the kitchen so yeah. i'm kind of stoked should be fun <laughs> no yeah it should be a cool uh i go i'll evolve to something really cool i think i i i i love having people show like for me my happiness would really come out of just people hanging out and just having endless amounts of things to be cooking yeah. <laughs> just because you get to always be experimenting so that'll be that's kind of that'll be the point of the show that's, that's what kind of the show and that's kind of, yeah that's, that's kind of how the show happened i mean like yeah. even like these last episodes i was like i explained what i was going to do and i was like oh shit i have this in the fridge and i have that over here cool. maybe we should add it so i was like oh we're gonna add this because <laughs> yeah. yeah. that's that's how i cook is like i'll show up to my my mom and my brother love having me over because i'll just be like what do you guys have they're like there's nothing at the house we need to go shopping and i was like no, let me go see what we have. And there was flour and eggs. And so I made pasta for everybody and they had tomatoes and basil. Mm. So you make a pomodoro sauce and you have pasta right there. Like you don't need to go out. Daya wants pancakes. So I just go find oatmeal and a couple eggs and throw in a little bit of honey and a little bit of, you know, whatever you have and you blend it together and then you make nice pancakes that can be fluffy. Like it's, it's have fun. Experiment. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what what Richard just described too, though, is a person who is much more resourceful when it comes to cooking than the average person too. And I think that's yeah. Important. Well, you have to remember, since I was like fourteen, my mom would go to New York, and I'd be left home alone for three yeah. weeks at a time, and so it would get pretty grim because my version was, hey, here's fifty bucks for you to spend on food, and Fat Richard at fourteen years old <laughs> would call up Pizza Hut. And order three large pizzas Knock it out right and away. just go buy about two gallons of ice cream. So I'm not saying that I've gone on the wrong side of the nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't always been on the, <laughs> but that was basically, you know, go buy a roll of cookie dough. Yeah. And that was over by like the first three days. I was like, fuck, what am I going to eat? Yeah. So that's where resourcefulness comes into play. Yeah. My version of resourcefulness was cooking things like hamburger helper when you didn't have any hamburger <laughs> or butter. Or so milk. It was just so it's water and noodles and the and the powder, seasoning yeah. powder and that's it. Yeah, it works. It's it's macaroni and cheese <laughs> when you don't have butter or milk. It's just right. not yeah. as good. No. Yeah, yeah, it's not as good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's all out of a box. But uh, so yeah, so look for the cooking show. It's going to be on a YouTube channel. Yeah, but yeah, because that's by the way. Speaking of that, that's part of the problem. It was a protocol where people are bitching oh, about yeah. the protocol because they're like, "Well, I don't know what to do." 
Yeah. It's like, uh, you can have dairies. I was like, right, so there's a number of things you can do with cheese and cream and milk and everything right, coming yeah. from the French culture. That's all That's, we have. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And people are like, well, yeah, but once I have cheese, what do I do? <laughs> I was like, all right. So I think this is, that's one of the reasons also we're excited about the cooking show. It's like to help people be on the protocol. Because yeah. yeah. if you then do a salad, <laughs> literally what they, they put a salad. It's like, now what? With what? fats yeah. and things on put it. Put cheese on it. Okay, then then what? I don't know, tomatoes? But it's a food. I'm like, it's fine. And then put oil <laughs> on it. Oh, yeah. and then so I was like, I think this we need to open that path. Yeah, for well, people, people lose their shit. I was yeah. like, okay, so just... Go try a tomato. Does it make you feel better or worse? Right, that too. Like, the whole point is having clear signals, right? That yeah. was that's the point. Yes, it's not. So if yeah. like even day, like she she was craving coffee. So she's like, hey, can I have a decaf? And I made her decaf. She's like, I still feel jittery. So I was like, so you're not having coffee? She's like, nope. Like it's that simple. Yeah, yeah exactly. If yeah. something makes you feel jittery, makes you feel shitty afterwards, don't have it. Don't have it. <laughs> but that's that's for me is like the first thing like we've been working with a few people they're like i don't know what to do and i was like okay so send me a list of things that you like to eat things that you don't like to eat and i was like okay so now you know what you don't like to eat and what you do like to eat so now go to the store and find three things that you've never eaten before yeah. <laughs> and start expanding your palate because <laughs> you never know if you're gonna like it or not until you buy it right and, you and try until it. you try it by the way so you want to know if something is works for you or not simple don't have it for two weeks Put it back in, yeah, mm -hmm. one at a time. You'll know exactly your reaction. Now, if you have don't have a good reaction to it, don't go like yeah, but I want it anyway, and then force it. Yeah, because guess what you're doing? This is telling yeah. you what to do, and your body is like, but I said no. And you'll just and you get do used it to anyway. that reaction, yeah. and you will get yeah. used to that reaction. So that's on, let's be honest. This is usually the problem we see is people that are like, I'm doing fine with coffee because you want to do fine with coffee. You take the coffee out, you put it back, you're jittery as hell, you're like that. But every time you say, yeah, but I want to have it. So I'm going to have it for three more days. Right. And at the end of three days, you say, see, I feel fine. Mm -hmm. You don't feel fine. You just bury that shit yeah. so sure, deep just yeah. used to that it. you can't feel anything <laughs> anymore. Like I had that people saying like, oh, we put coffee back in, but we're fine. I'm like, no, you're not. You just can't tell the difference. Yeah. Right. Because you blocked the signals. So the, the gap that, we, that I talked about in the beginning with the nutrition protocol and people's implementation mm -hmm has been interesting to see because I always thought in my head that it's like, well, you just need to be more like me. Just don't get all hung up on how good yeah. the fucking food tastes because me, I can eat yeah. the way it is. The boring shit mm -hmm. all the time. It doesn't bother me. Right. Right. But I can do that. Most can't, but also still can't cook. Right. So I can't cook. They can't cook. But I can eat boring shit over and over again. And most people can't. So the 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 cooking show is kind of a really nice way to teach you that you can cook it and, can be easy it can be and delicious by the way there is a price to pay for the boring for the yeah. boring food yeah, yeah. There is, that, that's also the again whenever you do that when my wife and kid leave me because i've been cooking miserable food for all these fucking <laughs> like what the hell dad <laughs> you know but when they go like cook it wait, once and wait, gonna be yeah bad. exactly <laughs> you you are creating a distance between the signals in your head, yeah. which is the, you know, and the greater the distance, the greater the somatic error. It comes back to that. Just people are becoming really, really good at, at getting stuck in their head, are shutting off the bodily Everything signals. Else, yeah. they, they, they're getting really good at that. We see it in training. We see it with pain. We see it with, look at the situation right now and everything is like, you are freaking out. It's okay to say it. It's everybody is on edge right now, but people are like, no, no, no. Like my conscious thoughts tell me, like they don't tell you shit. Mm -hmm. That's your ego talking. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How do we get that part out of the deal for the average person? I will do a, an episode about that's build the next episode. Okay. Yeah. Were we gonna do that this episode when we talked in the beginning or not? I think so. You okay. Said he's yes. gonna we just went further. No, gotcha. I just want an episode on it. No, no that's why. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, because that we have Richard and I wanted to uh, to go on the yeah, cooking show yeah. to explain that. But because it's going to be like. I don't want to you from yeah. that. No, there you go. I'm going to. No, like the whole I'm going to learn cooking. So no, you're going you're gonna to do more than that. You're going to learn to take care of yourself. Yeah. yeah. For once to put some love into what you do. Because mm -hmm. hopefully, if you can do that with food, maybe it'll trigger to your training as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean? for sure. Well, it should. I mean, it, yeah. I, mean I, I always have that stupid. I mean, not stupid, but I always have that very philosophical approach to everything. And so. If you approach something with fear, it's going to, in a sense, it tastes like fear. Yeah. Like if you approach something without love or care, like it's going to show. Like yeah. you see that with plants, if you see people that take yeah. care of plants or if you, wherever yeah. you see it. And with training, you see it all the time. If people approach a barbell with fear, they're going to fucking pop their back. Yeah. Like I had a coach that came to the assessment seminar 
and he kept going, uh, what do you do with clients that have, they're afraid of the sandbag because their back always hurts? And I was like, well, are you afraid of the sandbag because your back hurts? He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, of course. How, how are you going to teach it any differently? Yeah. So we spent an hour and a half learning how to walk without fear of the sandbag by teaching him how to do it properly. And you could tell like his face just totally changed as to how he can approach yeah. teaching people to do the sandbag carry. And so if you're not actually actively trying to do all the variations, you're never going to truly understand what it is. Like put some oomph into whatever the fuck you're doing. I think you train like you cook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like honestly, like it's like that's going to be a lesson for that. Once you watch the cooking show, it's like this is how we want you to train. Like we had that conversation yesterday. I was watching someone. So you did, not going to give names, but you, you did an assessment on someone. And then watching the person deadly for five minutes, I knew exactly what you told the coach to do, and I knew he wasn't being yeah. done. And it was fascinating to me because it was that was exactly all the stuff we've been fighting, which means the guy was, uh, you know, doing all lumbar erectors on his deadlift, but he's facing this way when I'm watching him sideways, so I'm only seeing his left side. And by the way, he stands up, I know the right, right side is fucked up, and I'm like, get, let me guess. It was this on the right, right? Yeah. He was like, yeah. I could see just by the way he was moving. But that full extent, so he went basically up to here and then the rest was all back. So he back starts with the back, yeah. then goes here and then finishes all back. Big stomach, pushing forward. And I'm like, I know your back hurts. And in between sets, he's doing something. And I'm like, let me get your back hurts, especially your right hip is. And I could tell by his body language, it was that. Richard, I tried to explain. So you have to do the psoas, you have to do this, you have to do, you know, like get internal torque and all that stuff. And it was understood as, okay, let's do three sets of 15 leg raise. And let's correct the position on the leg on the deadlift. I'm like, great. That's exactly what we don't want. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the opposite of what we do at Strong Fit. Yeah. And I was like, how did you get an assessment out of Richard and get this out of that? Yeah. You know what I'm pissed off? Because now his stuff doesn't work. Yeah. Because no. the guy is going to go see, I spend money for nothing. I'm like, no, you guys did not. Listen, it's not about changing the leg. It's not about doing 15 reps. It's about like, and by the way, on that, I'm sure you told him not to go full extension. Of course you didn't. And I'm sure you told him to uh, engage the external we'll obliques. an hour and a half on Exactly. Yeah. And, but he didn't do it. You know why? Because, and then going back to Ego, that's the next episode. It's like, yeah, but that's, that's not how you, this is how you deadlift. You do this, you like, you know, you press with your legs right. into the floor. You do that, but like, I don't care. Your spine is doing all the work. How, you know, like, why <laughs> yeah. are we not talking about this instead of, because they want the simple stuff of press your legs into the ground because well, they, they want read the it. simplistic part of it. Right. The difference between simple and simplistic is where everything is, that fine yeah. line. Yeah. You do simple, you don't do simplistic. Push your legs into the ground is a fucking simplistic. It's position over tension. It drives me crazy every time. Yeah. Yeah. But you see it everywhere. It's It's... I mean, I always relate it back to food, but it's, you go to a restaurant and this is where Tyler would get so pissed off, it'd be hilarious, yeah. <laughs> where we would go to a nice restaurant where you're paying, let's say that we were to go to a restaurant and you pay 500 euros just for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have done it. Not happening yet. <laughs> we don't. And it. you do. I would hold it first before we go any further. I was mad when I would come here to travel first and go out to eat with you guys, and I couldn't get out of a restaurant with one drink and a meal for less than sixty euros, well, yeah. almost consistently, to the point where you may notice. I, I stopped going. I noticed. I just said I'm going to yeah. go eat. And go. Yeah. Like, but so yeah. we go to a restaurant. We went to I think by far one of the most amazing experiences that we've gone to has been Hertog Jan in out of Bruges, um, in Belgium, and. That's been by far one oh, yeah, of the one. most badass fucking, I, I, I'm a meat salad. lover, but that salad is yeah. unreal. And they have 20 pieces of vegetables and they've prepared each one differently. And they each say- tasted differently. I kid you one. not. It was a layer yeah. salad like this. Yeah. And each vegetable, each stuff you ate tasted differently. I kid you not. And you would go from like having you bite yeah. into this lettuce and it tastes like an oyster. And you're like, how the fuck is that even possible? Super, but super they had like citrusy simple. carrots. Yeah. Uh, the sauce was, but right? it was the best fucking salad so I had in my life. What, what you see with these amazing restaurants is that they make such simple things. Yeah. But the work behind it has taken <laughs> so long to get yeah. there. Right. Some of it and is generations of work. Yeah. The, the mezcal that I brought from Mexico. It's been three generations for them to figure out how to actually... Be able to ferment and distill the agave because it would get super bitter or get foamy. Right. But you can make tequila in a, by just putting, or mezcal, just putting the agave and then and done. done. 
right? And so you see the same thing with fitness is like my assessments are very, very simple, but they're not simplistic yeah. because I've spent so much time with each fucking exercise, analyzing it on myself and testing it and watching videos and experimenting and going and going and going to where, I mean, I started feeling, I, I mean, I'm still learning. Don't get me wrong. Like I still learn so much from the sandbag and the, uh, the oblique opener that I can take people through an entire experience, but with one exercise for 45 minutes, like I'll take somebody that's having anxiety and we'll go at it. And depending on what they tell me from their, from some questions I ask, we'll just do oblique opener. What I do, it was oblique opener, uh, and glute bridges and leg races. That was it. Three exercises. And she was at the end, like, what the fuck? fuck just happened and it was about 45 minutes of time and by the way you don't have to do that no that's no, not no. what we're talking about because that's what yeah. richard does always be like well well that was the thing because, though, right because like everybody tries yeah. to mimic and then they all fuck it up so, too, so. i did this yeah. thing and she had this whole thing she's like holy shit and best slept she's had in a long time and yeah. the whole thing and one of the guys who was the coaches week goes hey what'd you guys do and she was open she's like oh well we did this this and this and then i get a message hey so uh, you know, during that coaches week, like what were you, what was the, how the, the glute bridge that you did with that one assessment and like, how, how come in, and I'm like, my clients you didn't, don't get it. Yeah. I'm like, you didn't, you didn't, you weren't there. That's not go do the yeah. glute bridge for fucking 500 hours and then you'll figure no, it out. Plus even not even that far. It's just, that was not the point. The point was you were going at anxiety. That, yeah. That's not what he was doing with his clients. And that's right. not what he should be doing with his clients. He was just trying to get the glutes engaged. That's another conversation. Right. Why was I getting pissed at watching the guy deadlift? And I was like, I know exactly your assessment. And she thought that's not enough. Yeah. So yeah. then she added stuff. And by doing that, made it over simplistic and fuck it up completely. You can't be Richard. So that's not what we're saying. Don't you, you as a coach, as a person, need to do the 500 hours on glute bridge if you're going to use it as an exercise. But that's not even the point. The point is, you can't take what he did on an assessment for a woman that was anxious because that was where, at that moment, that's what's going. Because yeah. that's the flow. That's what she wanted. That's what Richard wanted. There was a flow there. Take that. Put, do bullet points out of it. Take it. And then try to put that on all of your clients, regardless of their right. conditions, their fitness, where they are, where you are. Do you even know what you're doing? Is that what they want? Right. Like you can't do that. No. You can't take what we do and plaster it on all your clients. This is, this is mimicking, yeah. not learning. Right. Well, that's the difference between taking, just giving someone a recipe you know, that is very exactly. different. What is well, on that exactly. paper is it very different works. than the experience that I'm right. going to have eating Richard's cooking and us right. all in the room. Right. And, and by the way, we won't have different. the same because we don't have the same memory. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But that was the, like, for example, like the one of the restaurants in Peru, it took them 10 years to figure out how to take this wild weed that he's wanted to cook, how to actually use it. Because they have to, I put it on my wall and it was like, it took them 10 years to realize that they need to actually cut the, the stem at a certain day in a, while the, the moon is at a certain stage. So that's when the most sugars are being produced out of the plant. And so that's when they cut it and they have to let it sit for like 15 days, like 10 years to how to cook one plant. Yeah. Like that's why you're paying $50 for that plate. Because yeah. it's 10 years of a guy trying to fucking figure out how to fucking make that plant taste good for you. Like, that's insane. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you don't have to be that guy. But you don't get to be Costco either. Yeah. Right? Like, you're going to have to make a choice. And again, it's uh, there's a will there. You don't have to be one or the other. But are you going to be... Uh, who has the worst quality food? Walmart? Probably. Probably, yeah. Probably, right. So either you're going to be yeah. Walmart or you're going to be... The, that guy who spent 10 years, but so there's a gradient, but on which side do you want to lean? Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you're going to lean on that time, then guess what? It's going to take longer for you than going the Walmart route because Walmart is fast, it's easy. It's like, but is that what you want for your clients? Is that because trust me, if you have a small gym, you're not going to win the Walmart way. There's always going to be the Equinox, there's always yeah. going to be that shit. They will always win, yeah, always, always, always. But if you want to be that coach, then there's a there's work on the side, but you don't get to cut the corners by taking what we do and just making like, and just selling it. 
I'm pretty this sure we've seen people try. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually. Yeah. yeah. yeah believe it or no, not. they are doing it, but <laughs> yeah. that doesn't mean you can do it, but they are doing it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, uh, like suddenly we had part of the, uh, that, that's where uh, stuff like that. I remember when the OPEX people started to use a pick stick. Yeah. After yeah. all the shit they, they gave all the, us. All the shit talk. Yeah, yeah all the yeah. shit talk. And I'm like, but you don't even know why the pick stick. No. First of no. all, if, by the way, if you shit talk on something, you have no right to use it. I'm yeah. sorry. Like that should yeah. be a rule. You can use it, just then you have to apologize first. Well, yeah. at least give us credit. Come, come, back, come with your yeah, hat in your hand. Exactly. Like, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, uh, you don't know why the pick stick. So you won't be using it the way you should. For example, you take the best ingredients in the world. So even that plant that was cooked perfectly, you put it with the wrong meat, right. like chicken instead of beef or whatever. And guess what? It won't taste good because right. you don't know why. I cooked Richard's recipe with not the totally the same ingredients, but watched him cook it, paid attention to did it, exactly the went same and thing. did it what I thought was the exact same thing, and it was not as good. But that is it was still good. It was still, still no, it was yeah. still good, and I did put love. Okay. The difference is, of yeah. course, there's just there's little things that I'm. Yeah. It's about experience and quality and appreciating this, knowing to test and correct along the way, like right. you do. Yeah. My taste is this. There is a whole process towards coming to that appreciation. Right, right. and you understood the process. Yeah. So it's always a process. Otherwise, Richard can give you the recipe. You're gonna go home and say it doesn't work. Yeah, of course not, not because was, you did like shit. Yeah, if you would have asked me how was it, I would have said it's better than the shit I normally make, but not as good as Richard's. Right. And but at least it's better. But yeah, it's not yeah. just the recipe because you watched yeah. him cook it. If he had just gave you given you the recipe, That's you it. would have made a shitty dish and go like. Well, you would have gotten over it right away. What a fuck! Yeah, you would have been like yeah, scallops. Yeah. Well, no, like that's the thing that well, I scallops fucking. thing I don't. I have, I have not cooked scallops since I worked at the restaurant. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or if I would have said kimchi, and you don't know what kimchi is. Yeah, You've been really, like, yeah, yeah, fuck it, whatever. Yeah. You know, right. and so that's... And like then the, you replace it with something. Let me put ketchup instead. What? Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I always... Yeah. Ketchup. <laughs> cheese and ketchup. Ketchup. Like ketchup. Like a grilled yeah, cheese. Yeah, so good. Shit, yeah. <laughs> My first inclination towards any fermented food, like kimchi, kombucha, I'm like, these fucking hipsters need to stop it. <laughs> that's it. That's all I'm always... I'm like, done. No, but done. kimchi is good, man. It was really good. Kimchi is good. Kimchi is really good. No, but it's really a... The thing that pisses me off is people are like, yeah, I don't like it. I was like, have you ever tried it? No, but it just, it, yeah. no. no. You're it like, sound good. come on, give me a fucking break. But they do the same thing with training. It's, I'm like, how, yeah. like, if you can take, get out of your fucking head and get your ego, and next episode, <laughs> ego down where you go like, maybe you don't know. Yeah. Just maybe, just maybe. So when the guy deadlifts, maybe you could try to go, well, maybe Richard knew what he was talking about. Maybe I should try to remember and maybe I should try the way he showed one time to see if I experiment with it, it works better and not get in your fucking head going, that's the way it's being done. Because yeah. Yeah. that's the way I watch. Because maybe you were fucking wrong. Yeah. That happens. I taught yeah. the deadlift wrong for 15 years yeah. until I came up with internal torque. I fucked up my back for 15 years doing that shit. I, I went to my clients and said, made a mistake there. I was wrong. No. No. I, I don't know how many times I've said that to my clients. But then, and then after I said, but let me fix it because I think I know better now. That's okay too. But like, can you just give it a fucking try? But it'd, be, it'd be amazing to see the correlation because we have like a lot of the mentoring program coaches and everything. And the one thing that they always have issues with is our, our other coaches that don't want to listen because they don't want to touch the sandbags. It's not CrossFit, yeah. whatever yeah. it is. Exactly. Yeah. It'd, it'd be great to see the correlation of people that are unwilling to try new shit at the gym, even though their back is hurting, right. and the unwillingness to try ingredients or right. new things in the yeah. kitchen, right? And in life in general. In probably. life in general, totally. Um, the, the amount of avoidance there would be interesting to see how it translates through the whole spectrum of what right. they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Do you know what would be funny is actually we could test it because that's uh, interoception accuracy. Yeah. I bet you we could, uh, there are tests for that. We could, uh, and then, because I want to do that, and then the ego, and I would bet you the large ego people will have the a really poor uh, either interoception, accuracy, awareness of sensitivity. It'd be, it'd be funny to, to test all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's that refusal to listen. I, again, yeah. that's the next episode, but it's I don't think they. It's not even that they refuse to listen to us. Of course they do, but first because they re they refuse to listen to themselves. First. They hear us. They don't listen. They hear. Yeah, they hear. <laughs> but that you know, <laughs> they hear uh, because voices. I think it's the same thing from the body. They yeah. hear their body, but they don't listen they don't to listen it. To, yeah. yeah, they hear the signals. They just refuse to listen. And right. so if you can't hear, if you can't listen to your own body, you're not going to listen to somebody else. Right. You can't even listen to yourself. Right. And I think that's the fundamental what ego is. Is right. that right? Well, I think. 
craftsmanship's the name of the game, right? With food, training, that's the thing I think we want to put forward, especially yeah. with the cooking show. One interesting thing, I think we'll be adding some, you want to tell them about the whiskey thing too? We'll do oh, a little, right, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. Gonna, we're gonna do a little right. bit to shine the light even further on the appreciation for craftsmanship. We're gonna have some bonus segments for the cooking show where we'll have like, who I don't know what we call it, like Richard's Whiskey Lounge or something yeah. like that. Now I'm not a pro whiskey. I, I'm gonna tell you what, how I experience my whiskeys. But everyone, <laughs> every single person who is a whiskey pro right. will tell you that. So, yeah. so that is it's the always, one thing. Yeah. No person who is ever yeah. going to tell you how to appreciate whiskey is going to come up and tell you, try this. It's going to taste like right. yeah. fucking I'm very, like, I'm very persuasive. Is that the right word? Persuasive. Mm -hmm. And so when I love something, I want everybody to love it. So I'm, I'm, I'm here to show people that don't love. like food or don't love food or don't love whiskey that, hey, listen, there is a whiskey for you. Uh, there is food for you. You just have to find out what when it is. When I go is. to English-speaking tattoo artists, you know, when I, where yeah. I go, I want everything. I'll go back and I'll do the same thing. We'll do like 10 minutes yeah. just talking. I want to go back to that. I remember that fucking barber in Rome. Yeah. I want to go back. And, yeah. even with a broken English and yeah. the cutting of the hair. But and guys think, like that. And I think that series where we can have Richard educating a little bit of what his... To, to Julian, who's yep. Yep. who's just kind of picking up yep. that appreciation for some of those things. With, yeah. with, we can do the same thing with... Uh, Butchers and tattoo artists yeah. and coffee shops right. and uh, Speaking of that, cocktail the, bars. The protocol has changed my taste completely because I used yeah. to love sweet drinks even. Yeah. And now I'm in, in enjoying, Into I don't like sweet side. anymore. Yeah. yeah. I, I like um, smoky now. PD yeah, whiskeys, yeah. mezcal, I like smoky. Yeah. The protocol has completely changed my taste. Yeah. Since I've been off sugar for like six to eight, eight months now, uh, my taste has changed completely. Everything almost tastes sweet now. I, milk tastes sweet to me. Like yeah. it's, it's crazy how much my taste has changed. Well, I think, and I think that extra segments as we start to do some yes. of those will be really cool. And yeah. like Richard said, is is it? I don't remember who. Someone else said it probably more poetic, but it was a writer. He said a bit. It was like, you know, I never really loved jazz music until one night I was outside this club and I saw this person who was just the most enthusiastic about this band that was playing, and I watched them dance and move and do all these things. And he said, from that moment on. I, I appreciated right. jazz right. music. And he said, sometimes you just need to watch someone love something before you can learn how to love it. I like it. it. Yeah. And I, I like think it. seeing Richard's enthusiasm for cooking, for the whiskey, for all of that stuff, you're going to see it and you're going to appreciate it and you can adopt some of that for yourself. We should do, we should do that. Like, you know, talk to the, go to the local uh, farmers yeah. and have them talk about their, you know, because you can see the cow and then the stuff yeah. and then we can try the yogurt, we can try the heavy cream, yeah. the differences, just to show people like there is a, there is a way to do this. Yeah. I think, I don't know if it's despair or what is it, but to most people it's like, ah, yeah. it won't work. So I think we need not the hour and 30 minutes normal stuff, but no. just, you know, 10 minutes where I talk to a tattoo artist, when we talk to some bartenders, where we, to people who really, really enjoy what they do. Yeah. So they, so they can make you enjoy life in a way. Right. right. That there are ways to enjoy life that are not based on your fucking job, how much money right. you make. You know, like, you know, like yeah. those people exist. Yeah. That it's not about money. It's not about being in a big corporation. None of that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to take them to Juan, to Bar 27. We that put tattoos. the camera. Oh, yeah. 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 I can't talk on. about the new menu that's coming out, guys, but fuck. Yeah. No, but just like, him. Yeah. That him, guy is we, we put We put the camera and just talk. Just yeah. explain to us the menu. like Because that guy loves to talk about this in just 10 minutes. Because yeah. I think, honestly, I think for coaches out there, nothing will explain what coaching is better than those guys. Yeah. yeah. Like seeing the passion in their eyes when they talk about whiskey, where most people are like, it's, a, it's something I used to get hammered right. on weekend. Yeah, yeah. Juicy right. at Bob Mall, Bob will need to do with her because uh, she's so good at explaining she's, she's so sweet and so good. She knows and, my palate. Right. No, but because she's very precise. So you know what I would like her to is because her, she's on the, she memorized everything. So she's super precise, but still has a passion. Yeah. yeah. And you see both. And then you'll see people that are just full passion. They mm -hmm. still memorize the stuff, but you can tell them is just all about the taste and the different types that they all have because it's who they are. Yeah. yeah. I would love to do, again, 10, 15 minutes where they just talk and then we try just that because that's what coaching is. Because then you, you can, you'll understand that you can find your own identity. You can't be me, that's for sure. You can't be Richard. You can't, because you're you. Yeah. Not us. You, you shouldn't no. want to be. You should. You want should to be, you, you, by the way, you don't want to be me anyway. Trust me, it's it's complicated. Don't want to uh, be in the head. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very complicated. Like just just know that. Um, but like the seat is taken anyway, right? The, the is to give you what I would like to be able to give to people 
is the willpower to be themselves. Yeah. If I could give something to humanity, I would like to give that. Is the that the willingness to to be themselves. You know that yeah. that, mm -hmm. that willpower because it takes a lot of willpower, but even like that that desire to be themselves in their coaching where you go like so some memorization always, right? Yeah. Some mimicking because you have to start somewhere that's functional yeah. segregation. But after that, you go toward functional integration where you go like, who am I going to be as a coach? Right. How am I going to teach that exercise? So we, we teach the squat completely differently. doesn't matter. At the end, it's the same result. But you're going to have to, if I could give people a desire to find that, that would make me feel good. Yeah. Yeah. To me, that's what it is. Well, I can't follow that up with anything yeah, more profound or he interesting. He always kills the conversation right away. I do. Well, <laughs> what, before I we don't leave. know that I'd use the word kills, <laughs> but, but he's like, I'm he's like Tyler, yeah. Tyler, if you try I will, to follow this, it's I will one up your really guy. embarrassing for you first. <laughs> and then I'm also going to get the last in word, and that's going to be embarrassing twice. Yeah. yeah. So let's just Because I'll done. finish on that. No, no, no. Before I want to go, uh, actually, I'll leave that to Richard, is because we talked about this a lot, and we say we'd mention it, is coaches not training. Yeah. I think that's one of the... I keep talking about exercise library and everything. Coaches need to stop being theoretical and simplistic with their programming. They need to actually train to understand what the fuck they're making people do. I think that's one of the biggest things is I keep running into people asking me questions. I'm like, have you tried it? Have you done it? How often have you have done you it? Have you tried it? Fuck. Like the worst thing that I hate is people come and go, my back hurts every time I do sandbag carries. And I go, have you tried changing anything they're like well no well then what how do you expect a different result like yeah. how do you expect your back not to hurt they're like well if i do 400 meters every day it, it's bound to change i was like not if you don't change the way you're doing it yeah um you, you know see every day. yeah so it's you you have to fucking truly understand what you're doing in order to do that you need to fucking move you need to train you know why you need yeah. to train because you need to hit your head against that wall until you realize the door did not uh, open pushing but pulling, pulling mm -hmm. yeah and but guess how you figure that out by trying something different you know the mm -hmm. novelty yeah. search like i am tired of people with passivity where right. you see that right now the only thing you can ask people to do is nothing yeah don't change anything don't do nothing yeah. that you can ask people but the second you ask them to do something different to try something that's why uh, that's why we get into those weird conversation and, and the semantics right. come in so the the basically the the ship starts sinking the second you start to ask people to do something yeah. well there's in this industry it's you know the more change that i can promise that you'll get from the less amount of change that you have to actually do right yeah yeah that's that's that, the that, formula that's the that's, that's the, the money, money formula that's it. if i can promise you the most which means you have to do the least that is the measure with so, which I will make There's the most a way money. to squat. Don't change anything from what I say. Just squat like that. Do it for two years, you're fine. And if right. it doesn't work in two years, do it in three years. Or so pay yeah. someone else pay, in two years. But that was, yeah, that yeah, was, yeah, exactly. that was the one. Money. I went to a, a certification and I asked a very simple question of if you're seeing an athlete move improperly, what would be the accessory work that you would put? And the answer was given in a very big chested way of the movement will correct itself as he gets stronger. And now, about an hour and a half into this seminar, um, he starts talking about a client that he had that would come in and squat and do uh, starting strength. Or yeah. Yeah. And basically, a year and a half in, he actually paid attention to him squatting, and the dude's about to break his back, but has gotten now stronger. And so I just raised my hand and went, so you didn't fix any of the imbalances to begin with, so the structure that was weak ended up being weak, but he found the compensations to squat how you wanted him to squat because he didn't want to fail you. And the conversation just kind of died and we moved forward. Yeah. But it's 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 that, right? It's understanding what it takes to do a movement. You have to do the movement. And you have to do the movement because you need to understand what it takes to do the movement for you and for yourself. And, and you know why that coach couldn't figure that out? Because he can't squat heavy. Yeah. Because we squat heavy mm -hmm. and we can tell you there's a moment if you don't if you don't figure it out, you're gonna fucking you're gonna break. break right? that and we all bar back up. Yeah. 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 And we we've been there where we go, I need to do something different because yeah. this is not working. Yeah. yeah. And so that's that's where being able to understand, I mean, we say it all the time, is teaching each you're not teaching the squat, you're teaching the person to squat. You're teaching yep. the person to move better. That is our job as coaches and as whatever title you want to put to yourself. We are here to make people move better to be healthier. Healthier does not necessarily mean five pounds on the bar, but it may lead to five more pounds on the bar. It will lead to yeah. five pounds. On the bar. No. If you squat without pain correctly for a long time, it will, it will go lead. up. Yeah. It will go up. That's and just so a fact. 
so that that to me I, I think baffles my mind is the lack of people training like just yeah. not moving not experimenting no, but that's, not that's, uh, by the way when we, we say that because we've been seeing and asking and we are seeing something in you know, a percentages of 80 to 90 percent of coaches yeah. that don't train they train but they are not training yeah. right they, they train just enough to maintain the image that they're fit to actually train. They, they they do their nutrition just enough to keep the body fat percentage the same and so that they can look the part and yeah. often they train with less effort than no, they clients. demand of their clients yeah usually. yeah yeah and so it's when you write programming on paper and doing it is always Very different if you look at the template that i put on paper you go like yeah and when you do it, everybody mm -hmm. has gotten wrecked. Yeah. Everyone. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when you do it the way I say, you're gonna bit on paper, you go like, yeah. So if I were right. not if I were not doing the template, I would probably add shit to it, mm -hmm. which would either break you or force yeah. you to yeah. pace. Right. And at the end, you pay so much, you would get nothing out of it. Right. Yeah, or not know where I paid such a heavy price right. that certain things cannot be done. Yeah, right. no, exactly. I mean, there are right. times where it's like, oh, that was really demanding. Something needs stop. to change yeah. right? or, or anything and, like that. And guess what I did? So now, basically, because you think I'm doing it because I'm lying about it. Yeah. Like, imagine if I were lying about the template and then I fucked up the stuff and I something demanding. Now, basically, I got into your head that you're failing. Yeah. I failed because I didn't do the template. I didn't know what I was doing and I programmed incorrectly. Right. I failed you. But you're going to think you failed me because you can't finish my session. Mm -hmm. So now you feel like a wuss. Well, actually, I'm the one who failed you in the first place. Yeah. So that's that was what you were talking about the IQ test, right? That was right. Really good. So yeah, it's exactly that. The IQ test was invented by a French guy, eighteen something, uh, sixty, I think, something like that. Where the idea of the IQ test was, we're gonna test the kids in order to tell which to, which teacher is fucking up. Mm -hmm. That was the point of the IQ test. We'll see the kids with a lower IQ test, and that will tell us that those teachers are not doing good enough of a job. Yeah. Right. That was the point of the IQ test. And of course, what it is now, a dumb way to kid. test Smart the kid, kids. Dumb kid. Exactly. Yeah. Well, standardized testing in the States <laughs> is very similar. It becomes, <laughs> yeah. it becomes more about the child's right. ability to be placed in a university. But that was, never that, the, that was never the point. And so we see, but again, we, when we're talking about this, we're not saying like here and there. We're talking 80 to 90% of coaches that we talk to are not training anymore. And understand, you might be hurt. You say you don't have time. You're coaching six classes a day. And all that okay. stuff is true. Well, that stuff is true, but it still doesn't change the problem. You got into this business because you love athletics. You want to coach people and everything. Right. You, you have to train. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, because yeah, the you want to understand people, the importance of stressing athletes. Too. Yeah. The, amo the, the amount of coaches that we've come into that just will no longer train or do whatever they're teaching. Yeah. Like the amount of CrossFit coaches that no longer do CrossFit, CrossFit. Yeah, it's crazy. is crazy yet they still put their athletes through crossfit like that should tell you like and i'm not saying if you do crossfit correctly i think it has longevity you were a crossfit yeah. Yeah. yeah um you know i did crossfit i was oh, that's, true. that's true that is true oh, you might have been one for you might a have been crossfit while, for a while but yeah <laughs> identity situations <laughs> yeah. identity crisis um but you know what i mean like being able to do the constraints of what crossfit is which mm -hmm. is you know functional movement done high intensity and constantly varied or random um, depending on depending on, on what you're year, enjoying, yeah. um, that should last you for the longest time. That's so the know. main thing that they do with CrossFit is teaching you long-term health, and yeah. we've taken it into the short-term rewards yeah. of trying to go into competition. And you, as a coach, broke, and then you stop doing CrossFit, and yet you start you keep teaching the same thing that broke you. Yeah. Like rather than trying to better the program that you were providing for yourself and your clients. And then you're again, it's like, oh yeah, but that's because I got the problem from CJ or whatever this, or this. Yeah. And then by the way, you still never learn from yourself either. Mm -hmm. But like how many coaches did we see doing seminars and everything not being able to push anymore? Yeah. And I'm like, you're screaming at your clients every day to push, you tell you, and yeah. you can't do it yourself. Yeah. yeah. At some point, I'm sorry, you got to look <laughs> in the this mirror. This last seminar, I almost murdered them because they were like, oh, I know what you're trying to do here. I'm going to go home. I was like, that's if you know it, then fucking show me that you can do it in one set and then you can go well, home. That, that's not the one I got to me. The it one was, I got to me was the dude who we said, take the sandbag until you drop it. So you go maximum yeah. distance to drop it. The guy comes back and they said, I didn't feel anything. I'm like, well, did you push everything? I was like, well, I'll drop the sandbag over there. I was like, but why did you drop it? Lower mm -hmm. back or whatever? I was like, oh, no, no. I just went two steps more than the guy next to me. Yeah. yeah. It's like, but that was not what we said. 
Yeah. So you didn't do anything that we said. He's like, yeah, but oh yeah, that's a stupid reason. But uh, me, I need someone to beat and everything. I'm like, but that's not the point. what we said. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why would you come to the seminar and yeah. just to get a sandbag two feet past the other dude? Then you can do that at home. You don't need me. That's not what I do. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, why are you not here to learn? So you're here to what? To mimic what I do so you can sell it? Fuck off. Just get yeah. away from me. I don't want your money. Yeah. Because this is how we get in that fucking mess in the first place. Yeah. This is why people are unhealthy because we have offered nutrition advices using people with six packs and you can be that person where it's not fucking true. People have tried, lost 40 pounds, didn't get didn't get to a six pack because they never will because that's not the way they're built. Is this they're not willing? They don't have. They're not going to put that kind of effort into it because not yeah. everybody wants. Um, and instead of being happy to where they were, they were disappointed because of the stuff that was promised to them and then gained back 50. I see that all the time. And they can't lose it because of the stress levels that... Right, the stress just... and then their self-image goes to yeah. shit mm -hmm. and women feel like shit because they don't look like, you know, the crossfitter and stuff like that. And so, st the stress and then they starve themselves to be that. They lose their periods, which is not sustainable. Well, and that starts changing the vibe that you carry into the gym every day. So exactly. Your effort, shit, your and mood, so, shit, your intensity dies. The right. whole thing just and your training good and then of course that makes you look worse so now you feel worse and then you don't sleep so that you can't train and then they go down the wrong way all because we promise things to make money yeah, yeah. well human beings are such interesting creatures in that momentum really dictates oh, a fuck lot yeah. yeah if like a, either a, way a setback can lead to 10 more setbacks yeah and lead to this totally different thing. Yeah. Yeah. You becoming a totally different person because you just weren't willing to suffer a little bit and put the brakes on this momentum and turn it around. Right. And it's the same thing the other way. It's when things are going good and people maybe aren't doing something responsibly, but they're getting the weight lost and they're getting some PRs. People ride that momentum until the fucking wheels come off too. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think there's, there's a sense that momentum, I, I always, when I see people chasing the wrong momentum, it reminds me of it's it's a thing I always do always, but it's a it's a lack of presentness. Always. Yeah, it's, it's it's going this way. It's going to keep going. It's it's already gotten out of control. Yeah, you're right. not in the moment taking control. You're it's already moving, and it's the same way positive and negative. And I think that's uh, I think that's the piece that people people ride the, that way. The too head far. is not designed to lead. No. Adi conscious thoughts are not designed to lead. You know, like uh, people always talk about empirical evidence. Empirical evidence doesn't prove anything ever. The his job of empirical evidence is to disprove something. Right. The job of your head is not to lead you. Is to, you know, disprove certain mm -hmm. ideas where your body wants to go like, hey, or stuff, and you go like, oh. Yeah. But it's not supposed to lead you anywhere. This, this is three brains those yeah. two are the one that's why we say follow your heart that's why we say gut instinct because mm -hmm. they are the one making the real decisions this is not and unfortunately 99 percent of people keep going there. lead with this and yeah. that's where a lot of the shit happens and you see that with the fitness stuff it's like and that's why like i get instagram and all that stuff but it's like this like the whole monetization of fitness like again you can make money doing fitness but if you do fitness for money then it's like making art for money. Yeah. It's like making food for money. Then you're fucking McDonald's. Right. Mm -hmm. Then that's what you are. You're not because trust me, like the people that invest so much into the food, they don't make that kind of money. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. But they're fucking they have joy. Yeah. yeah. They have there's a point to their existence. Yeah. Is that really who you want to be? Is that well, fucking I was looking ghost? like at um uh, Gaganandan from yeah. Bangkok. Like that guy's gone through so much shit. Yeah. But as soon as he didn't like the things that was going on with his partner, he closed. The, he fucking closed. He had the best restaurant in the world, yeah. and he said, "No, we went fuck there. you guys." He's like, yeah. I, I don't, I, and it was from one day to there. He goes, "My business partners want to do something. I'm not willing to do it. So go fuck yourselves." And right now, it's super cool. He has like his test kitchen, and one of the meals you have to take your middle finger and you eat it because the fuck you to the business partners. <laughs> they, oh, dude, I love this guy because he's just it, he is who he is, and he loves making good food and making people happy. We went it's there. It's amazing. It was the craziest emotional experience yeah. I've ever had eating because you're exhausted by the end of the meal. But he wasn't kidding. He was in the top either five or ten best restaurants in the world. Yeah. And from one day to the next, so you know, like fucking busy all the time. By the way, yeah. super cheap. Because it's in uh, it's in Bangkok. Yeah. Uh, from the day to the next, he closed it. Yeah. Jesus. From the day so, to the next. I mean, you're talking multiple million dollars yep. gone into the restaurant. Oh, oh yeah. That, oh a, my God. That's a big one. But, the, but yeah, you know, it's that's somebody that you can tell just 
wants to do his craft of making better food. By the way, when he opens another one, people will just will show flock up. to that. Yeah. There's also something about the business, right? If That's a longer conversation, but it's the same thing with your gym. Like, If people are loyal to you as a coach, they'll right. stick longer mm -hmm. to when your gym is closed for a month or two. Right. Like we've seen that too. If they love you, if they are loyal to you, they'll stick, they'll, they'll hang out a little bit longer. Yeah. And sometimes all you need is one more week not, to, not for right. your business to fail. And that week, I think, is gained on the human level. It's not gained out of structure. It's not gained on being an accountant. It's gained on the human connection you have with your people where yeah. they just, you know when they have a choice? Mm -hmm. And they just go, uh, and they're going to hang on just a little bit longer because, they, because of you. Yeah. Right. That's how you stay I in business. because you have more treadmills than the next yes, guy. Yes, exactly, right? right. Yeah, it's not more fancy right. equipment. Like <laughs> yeah, by the way, how'd that go once you borrowed the, that business? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you much money from the bank. How's that going? Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna you have to need sell, more stuff. You're going to have to sell those raw wheels for cheap on eBay. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, we're going we're gonna to have equipment soon. Like, that's yeah, that's true. There will be a great liquidation, I'm thinking. Yeah, you're going to be able, if you can just hang on, you're going to be able to buy a lot of used equipment. Yeah. Well, there is something to be said. I was talking to somebody yesterday about that. It's in the fitness industry. We'll wrap up on this, I guess, is, is the market is, there's a lot of people are going to fall off. A lot of people who weren't actually that committed to the industry. Right. Uh, during this time, there's going to be, it's going to, some good people might get caught up in the, uh, in the storm too. Yeah. Uh, some less resilient business. But if those people are really in the industry, they'll find their way we'll back into back. it. Yeah. It may not be that business, but if that's your passion, I think if it you... It sucks, there's no question. Yeah, yeah. But I do think that the people that learn and adapt through this time, um, we're going to weed out a lot of the bullshit that was never going to be there for the right. long term to begin with. You know, the and one, now, yeah. in the future, in the next year, two years, three years, I think those of those of us that power through and commit to doing a better job yep. going forward, I think uh, those are the people that will float to the top. You know what? I think the good ones that, that will either sustain or come back, the one thing that we realize is that the first people that left their gym should not have been there yeah, in the, the first place. Exactly. Because yeah. they had no loyalty to them. Like they put their heart and soul into this of taking care of those people mm -hmm. for five years and the dude in the first month cancel his membership. I don't know that he should come back. Yeah. That's your decision, not mine. Yeah. But you've put so much into this yeah. and within yeah. one month you can't pay $200 because mm -hmm. you're worried about this. So, like, you know, like, imagine like we don't have enough food. You share yeah. food with your uh, neighbor, but when she goes the other way he doesn't help you mm -hmm. that's a little bit how it feels to yeah, me no. like on like p people that already canceled their membership within three weeks within one month of lockdown i'd be like yeah. all right yeah you should have you shouldn't just have a business it should be your business so your Absolutely. identity should yes. be enrolled and, and so. in 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 coaching it's far more than just a business mm -hmm. yeah. it's you giving your heart and soul to people you're trying to help them you have been fighting to make them more likely more able to survive this pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what you've been doing since you've been open. You've been preparing people physically for this shit, to handle stress better, to less likely to die, to all that stuff. And their way to repay you is the second the actual stuff you prepare them for happens, they, don't, they drop you. What does that tell you? Yeah. Yeah. That tells me all I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> About those people, for yeah. sure. But maybe if you have that many dropping, it also maybe indicates that you did not do enough toward the human side of things. No, you're trying too hard to do the Google AdWords and the Facebook shit the and all that stuff. stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Of maybe, you know, like getting the connection with your people. I think hopefully we will, the fitness industry will learn a lot from this pandemic, like to show that what truly matters. And yeah. it's still the human connection and making humans better. Absolutely. You know what the fitness industry is going to learn a lot from? The last 30 minutes of this episode after I tried to wrap it up. I'm glad that, I didn't wrap up. Do you have a, a Mexican? Hour, so, but it was pretty good. So you have a Mexican <laughs> yeah. on the show? So in Mexico, there's always at least three goodbyes. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> this, is, this is the yeah, third exactly. one. So now yeah. we can actually... No, we're good. I think that's yeah. often a South Dakota thing, too. Yeah. Is I find a way to say goodbye and you do the thing and you there get you out. And then, okay, now we do yeah, it. Exactly. And then, yeah. So now we can talk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not that we've done the stuff out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. So, but thanks a lot for listening, guys. The cooking show is going to be... By the time you're getting this, it better be in the thing below. Uh, but it's also going to be on the YouTube channel. We'll have a playlist there for it. You'll see it. Make sure you are subscribed and click the notification thing. I think that's how it works now. Click here. There's two layers. Don't. I'm not doing it. I'm not adding that. There. <laughs> he does it on the cooking show too. And I'm up in the air whether or not I'm going to do it. At least not right away. <laughs> Fucking guy. Click subscribe. <laughs> 
but uh, but but for now, everything's going to be on the same YouTube channel. So if you want to get notified when more than just the podcast drop, you'll need to do more than just subscribe. Click subscribe, then you can choose the ad to get notified. And the cooking show should be dropping soon or already be there. And more episodes will be coming out, I think, weekly, most yeah. likely. Yeah, yeah. At a minimum, I think, actually. At, at so. least, yeah, because well, we can always do one dish a week. Yeah, we're yeah, filming a few dishes yeah. a week. Yeah. And so with travel, I think one a week will be. It'll be short videos, longer. by the way, not an hour and a half. It'll yeah. be like 10, vi- 10 minutes. 10 minutes yeah, yeah. five to 15, yeah. let's say. Yeah, fast, easy to follow. Yeah. All right. Later, guys. Rare oh, Barracuda. Rare Barracuda, yeah. Uh, Strong Fit One, Tyler F. and Stone. Uh, support the podcast at podcast.strongfit.com, strongfitequipment.com, or .eu. We have Manta Fitness selling sandbags and goodies in Australia and New Zealand. Just, yeah, and, and New Zealand. Zealand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for us, uh, sandbags are going, but we still have them in stock. Yeah, so and we will so, be shipping so no matter what. They yep. extended our, our lockdown here, our smart lockdown, which is, I think, just put smart in front of something and it'll sell. Sound like it's going right? to be good. Smart yeah. water, smart car, everything. Look, smart this lockdown, lockdown is better than other South Korea. For yeah. sure. So we not, in Holland, we're not bad. Yeah. Yep. So, but I think, uh, so you got four more weeks. You need some stuff at home. Sandbags are going to be the place to play, or the thing get you're going to need to get. And strong fit equipment is yeah. going to be the place to get them. Everything else, I don't know. Look at our stuff yeah. for now. We have friends. Look my, around. My brain There's is lots. haggard. So yeah. Yeah. We will, uh, we'll see you guys in a couple days.